Hey, how you doing? Uh, this is Alex. Today I'm going to take a little bit of a break from doing gear demos, and I'm going to do a little bit of an online lesson today. Um, so the vi title of this video is Travis Picking is Easy, and that is something I truly, deep down, believe. The Travis Picking is really not that hard. If you break it down into a few simple, easy exercises you can work on. So for those of you that don't know, Travis Picking is a style of guitar playing, using your fingers. Um, and the trademark of Travis picking is your alternating bass, you know, like this. We all know that sound. Uh, it can get a lot more complex. So, so in this video, I'm going to be walking you through some simple exercises you can do to get better at Travis picking, learn some new Travis picking patterns, and come up with your own if you need to. Although, most Travis picking patterns have uh, already been done, so good luck with that one. All right, so um, before you get started, I think one of the first things that you need to do is make sure you're actually using the right technique. You Make sure you're using the right hand positioning. Um, the biggest problem I see with most of my students is that they try to pick like this, with their thumb behind or kind of flush with their first finger here, and they go like this, and they have a really hard time finding the strings um, with their thumb or with their fingers, because this happens, what this does is it, it causes what we call flyaway fingers. When you go like this, your fingers really come up a lot. And it makes it hard. One, it just makes speed hard because you're making a much bigger movement than you need to. But the other thing that it does is it makes it hard for you to find which string you just left and get back to it. So I always tell my students, make a thumbs up like this. You're going to give it a thumbs up and then you're going to put your hand on the guitar here. So your thumb is going to be playing either probably this and this. Or like this and this, alternating on your bass notes. And that's one of the, the trademarks of Travis picking, that you're alternating your bass. So once you've got your thumb here, you're just going to uncurl your fingers a little bit and put them under the strings that you're going to most mostly be playing. And we'll talk about string changing later. But for now, we're just going to assume you're going to be playing two adjacent strings here with these two fingers. So it could be here or here. It either depends on the sound you want, if you're doing uh, just a backup part, or if you need a melody, you need to have your fingers on the right strings. So you want to make sure your thumb is forward. Your thumb is your furthest finger forward. And that's because when you pick like this, your fingers only have a very short distance to go, and then it makes it much, much easier to find your way back. So if you find yourself doing this a lot, Remember, thumbs up, and then uncurl. That's it. All right, now when you get down to it, Travis picking really is very simple. There's basically two options to what your fingers are gonna be doing. I almost kind of think about finger picking as being like binary code. It's either a one or a zero. And in our case, it's either thumb and finger together like this, and or this, or this, or this. So it's either your thumb together with your first finger on the low string, your thumb together with the first finger on the second you know, on your second bass note, your second finger together with the lower one, or together with the higher one. That's it. So here's some simple exercises you can work on. So we're gonna start just with our second finger. I'm playing, I'm playing a C chord. I know you can't see that far down the neck. I'm playing a C chord. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna alternate my thumb. And just do that until that's very easy. Speed it up and slow it down. Now, the easiest thing to do do first before you do together is actually do separately. So between every thumb stroke, I'm going to play my second finger. Once 
once I've got this slow, I'm gonna speed it up. And once I've done that for, you know, two or three minutes, I'm gonna switch it up and I'm just gonna do my first finger in between. All right, so once I've worked on playing my melody strings on the offs, I'm gonna work on playing them on the beat. So I'm gonna be doing, again, I'm gonna start with my second finger and I'm gonna just, all we're doing right now is we're pinching. I'm going. There again, speed it up. And now I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna do it with my first finger. It's as simple as that. So now let's talk about some actual patterns that you're gonna play. The first one that most people learn goes thumb, and then your second finger, then your thumb on the next bass note, and then your first finger. Thumb, two, thumb, one. 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 And so on and so forth. Play it as slow as you need to, but play it as fast as you can. Once you've got that, you're gonna reverse it. So you're gonna play your thumb, then one, thumb again, then two. So it's thumb one, thumb two, thumb one, thumb two. There again, play it as slow as you need to, but play it as fast as you can. Those are your two most basic patterns and continue playing those until you don't until you don't have to think about them at all anymore. Okay, so now we're going to introduce having one note on the downbeat. This is the pattern that you probably most closely associate with Kansas's Dust in the Wind. What we're going to do, we're going to play our thumb two thumb one pattern like this. But what we do is we shift our uh, second finger, an eighth note early, onto the one, onto the downbeat of one, and you're gonna pinch, and then play the pattern out as normal. So it's thumb and two together, then thumb one, thumb two. <coughs> you don't wanna do both. You don't wanna go, That's a fine pattern, it just doesn't apply to this song, and it's, it's a lot harder to get fast. But it'll sound like this, and you all know this. It's a great pattern to learn. Um, it's really great because it gives you a strong downbeat on one, which really allows you to actually stay in time better than if you're just kind of always going like this. If you haven't been counting, it's really easy to forget what's one and what's three. So just work on this and start learning Dust in the Wind if you haven't yet. That's a great song to learn for Travis picking guitar because he actually wrote that song as a uh, teaching tool to help him learn Travis picking. All right, so once you've got your picking pattern for Dust in the Wind down, we're gonna kind of reverse that pattern. And we're gonna play separately on beat one, we're gonna go thumb one, and then on two, we're gonna pinch like that, so it's. So 
again, it's thumb, one, pinch. And can continue the pattern normally. One more time. Thumb, one, pinch together on two. And that gives you strong backbeats on two and four. All right, so now I'm going to show you a pattern that Leo Kotke uses in his song The Fisherman. It goes like this. It sounds complicated, and there's a lot of movement in that, but here again, this is really all the same parts, just with a little bit of addition. So we're going to start out the pattern I just showed you. So it's thumb, one, then together, thumb and two, then one again. So we have then we're going to pinch one and two together, and then one, and then thumb together again with two. So you get So on my down beats I'm always pinching together with my thumb and my second finger and then I'm playing one in between. And then change your bass note. So it's So again the first half is this. And that's it. So it's one and two and then it's three and four. And so there again, it's just, is my finger playing with my thumb or not? And in this case, it's doing both. Your second finger is always playing with your thumb like this. And then your first finger is always playing in between. So it seems like a really tough pattern when you first hear it. But if you approach it methodically, it's very, very doable. Now, he basically uses that same pattern in this song, The Fisherman, and just the melody notes move up. And now we get into a situation where our fingers have to change strings. So we go. So it's our, our Fingers move together as a set. When that melody moves up onto the first string, our fingers jump together. And there's very few situations where you're gonna be playing and you're gonna be playing on different strings like this. See how much worse I am at that? Because you just never have to do it. Not never, but it's very seldom. So when we move up, We just move them up together. So in that song, he plays a lot of fast runs, but the heart of that run is this. And that's how you play the fast runs in most finger picking stuff. You know, one more thing I wanted to discuss that I just thought about that I actually get a lot of questions about from my students um, is actually about my fingernails. Um, a lot of people think you need really long claw-like fingernails to play, and you really don't. And in fact, it's really not necessary. And, and it can be a hindrance to have your nails too long because it's easier to snag them on the strings. If you look, my nails are a little longer than they are on this hand. I keep them very short on this hand. On this hand, I keep them grown out just so you can see the tops of the fingernails. If you're looking dead on at my hand, you're just seeing the tops of the fingernails come out over the fingertips. It's not necessary or really advisable to have super long fingernails when you play. 
You just need to have fingernails long enough to when you play the string, you're gonna play with your fingertip. And a lot a misconception too is that you play with your fingertips, but that is not the case at all. But when I play, I'm gonna play with my fingertip, not not the fingernail, and it's gonna just brush up against that string and it's gonna get a little more volume and a little bit more brightness than you would get if you didn't have any fingernails at all. Um, and one thing I'm absolutely religious about is keeping my fingernails trimmed. And not just for, for shortness, but trimming them to keep them smooth and filing them. Um, they won't break off as easily, but also if you see, can you see my fingernails there? My fingernails don't have any hard lines or on the sides. I keep them very rounded as they go back towards the cuticle. Because if they're sharp, if you, if you don't file off that flat spot next to the cuticle, one, it's probably where your fingernail is going to break if you're going to break off your fingernail. And two, that's where it's going to get snagged on the string. So make sure you're filing your fingernails. They just, you do want them smooth, you don't want them rough to catch on the string. And like I said, just take off this hard side here on the nail and you won't get snagged. All right, um, so I hope you found this exercise useful, well, all the exercises. I hope you find all the exercises on this video useful. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line. And by the way, today this guitar I'm playing is a Takamini EF7 MLS. This is part of their uh, Legacy series. Very beautiful guitar. Great sounding. For sale in my reverb shop. So, feel free to like, share, subscribe, all that good social media e stuff. Like I said, if you have any questions, drop me a line. And if you want to... Uh, if you want to do Skype lessons, I do Skype lessons for all this kind of stuff too. So uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.